welcome to this new guide I will be making. It'll be a whole series of basically every single Treyarch Zombies, except for Vanguard and probably Cold War. I probably won't make one for those. Really, they're pathetic and stupid and you shouldn't even be playing them because they play differently. We'll be going through World at War, Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3, Black Ops 4. Basically what this tutorial is going to show is just how to get to the highest rounds, not to do the Easter egg uh, stories or or how to com how to truly complete the game. The original purpose of zombies was established back in World at War and basically in Black Ops 1 as well is just survive. Survive as long as you can. Survive the endless hordes of zombies because there is no end to this game really. So with World at War, the game price is going to be a little weird. Uh, you can buy it flat out for 20 bucks on uh, the Steam store, but on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, those those versions, uh, y you can kind of get them down at like hand-me-downs. You can go to like GameStop or something. I don't know. I don't know where they would sell it still. I don't think you can really buy these games off of the game system store anymore. I don't think those systems are active. Also, online does not exist anymore, so this is much of a solo game, really. But if you want to play this game online, the easiest way to do that, really, is to just buy Black Ops 1. By the end of this tutorial, if you want to play with friends, this entire thing should just be ignored. And you should just move on to the how to play Black Ops 1 zombies. So, as you can see, the DLC on PC is completely free. You get four maps free, no charge. But if you want the last three maps of the DLCs, uh, they'll be 10 bucks. I don't know if you can actually get them anymore. They might be just gone. You'll want to get this application. Uh, it, it's very small, kilobytes. It's, it's, it's super simple. There's nothing bad going to happen. It, it can't interfere much. It's just going to make it so that the game's a lot more modern on, on the, the field of view, kind of, to make it feel a little more fast paced, to give it a little more space so you don't feel so cramped. But basically, you'll just launch the game through this application. If you have a widescreen monitor, and this is only for a widescreen monitor, you will want to get an application that allows you to have a widescreen, which I will provide a link down below in the description. Call of Duty World at War Zombies. Uh, you're just going to click on Solo, and you're going to go to Mission Select, and you're going to click Nazi Zombies. If you do not have Nazi Zombies at the bottom, you have to launch Zombies first. Or you have to complete the campaign, which you're not going to want to comp complete the campaign. It's long and boring and stupid. So you're going to learn how to open the development mode. And you're going to type in a uh, command line that will allow you to launch the first map and, and the other three as well. Which I'll show you now. You're going to make sure to enable this. And you're going to type slash devmap Nazi zombie prototype exactly the way I type it. I will leave in the description how to do this for all four zombie maps. As you can see, it's a very basic room with not much in it. You'll also notice there are five windows in this area. Each window will allow zombies to enter. These boards, you'll eventually learn, are kind of useless uh, later later in, in higher up rounds. You can see how many rounds you have at the bottom left. Right now we're on round one. We have 500 points on the right. That was the Car 98, never purchased that. This is the M1 Carbine. That's the gun that you will probably want to buy if you see it in any other map. But with this map specifically, you will not want to buy it. As you can see, the zombies can tear down the boards. They'll come through the window. On round one, you will only want to knife because it's a one knife kill. You want to save your ammo. You're going to maximize on points this way. You can rebuild barriers for points. It doesn't take points to build them. It gives you points. This is the first door you can buy. You don't want to buy that one. You want to keep that one closed and you want to come over here and buy the help door. 
in this room, you'll see that there's a box to the left with two question marks. That is the mystery box. It'll give you a random weapon that's in the game. You'll notice there's more windows in this room. There's also wall weapons in this room. You can choose what you want to do, but the best strategy is just to save points until you can hit the box and start using the box over and over again. Because wall weapons tend to get antiquated over time. At this wall, you can see there's nothing here, but it's actually a barricade there. It's hidden. You can throw grenades on round two. It's a good idea too, because you want to save your ammo. So just try to aim the grenade because you will throw it and it'll go a little further than you throw. And the zombies are walking towards you, so you want to aim a little bit in front of them. So once you run out of grenades, like I have, you're going to start shooting one whole mag into a zombie. If they're a crawler, you can knife them. After you shoot a whole mag into the zombie, you knife them. This will maximize on ammo and points. You'll notice every hit a zombie takes, it's 10 points. Every kill you make, it's 130 points. I just got a power up by accident, which was double points. You can see it counts down how long you have. That countdown timer is only for this map. They change it later on. At barricades, you will want to face the other direction while rebuilding them, because you want to make sure nothing will come up behind you. We're now on round three. I now have 2,000 points. I'm going to spin the box. I got a good weapon, an MP40. I did not choose to hold the gun. I swapped my weapon before I could pick it up, but it is in my secondary gun. Now I have my MP40. I ran out of ammo on my pistol, so I'm going to go back to the box and hit it again. This time I'm going to switch my weapon to the pistol and pick up... Ah, huh, I got a ray gun. This gun is a one-shot kill for a while. It's something interesting. It's called a wonder weapon. Each map has a wonder weapon on it. It may repeat, it may be a ray gun, or they might have their own gun. Later on you'll notice there's another wonder weapon. This gun is dangerous to use though. It is the strongest gun on the map, but it is the most dangerous. It has a miniature explosion wherever it hits, so if you aim too close to yourself and shoot to the ground, you will hurt yourself. As you can see here, I got another power-up floating here. You didn't get to see the last one because I got it too quickly, but this is a max ammo. If you let it sit long enough, it'll begin to flash rapidly and you will lose it. The thing about power-ups is you get a limited amount. So, if you save them by not picking them up, you can use them again later on. It's a good thing to use later on once you got really good at the game, but in the beginning, for your safety and your ability to get to a higher rounds, you might want to just pick up power-ups immediately so you can get better at the game. Now you go upstairs. You can see there's wall weapons, more barricades, And this question mark here. Only 1,500 points. I have zero. But when you make your playthrough, you should uh, buy it and see what it gives you. This room is important. You can buy more wall weapons and grenades on this wall. This will be a good location to stay and stand here and hold off the hordes of zombies. It's because you're protected from the back, there's only one window in that room, and they all come through this one door. You can see that there's a miniature explosion that takes down all the zombies. In later rounds, it will become less effective. You typically want to save your stronger gun for later rounds because the zombies get stronger. You can see this is a nuke. It'll blow up all the zombies currently on the map. If there's more zombies for the round that haven't spawned in yet, it won't kill them. You must be cautious with nukes. It won't kill them completely. There's also red barrels around the map. You can shoot them and they'll blow up. You can use this to kill zombies in early rounds. Here you can see it's getting a little congested with zombies. It is round five. It's getting a little more difficult. You can see I'm dumping a whole mag into a horde. This is an insta-kill power-up. This will allow you to kill zombies instantly in any method you choose. You can see I just knifed them. 
Be careful, they can sneak up behind you like you just saw. The knife only damages for how many rounds you have, so if it's round 5, you have to knife a zombie 5 times to kill him. As you could see there, there was the hole in the wall that I mentioned earlier. It's a hidden barricade that zombies will break through walls. You'll notice this comes up later in other maps. Here, you can see I can get myself into a sticky situation. There's too many zombies. If there are zombies too close to you, and it seems like you're going to have a tight fit, it's always smart to run and then jump past them. They can't hit you when you're jumping. If you can, you can train zombies into the hallway, running around them, and when you build them up enough, you can shoot into them and get a lot of points. As you can see here, insta-kill is activated, and one bullet kills. Here's a max ammo power-up. Make sure to reload before picking it up. It only max fills your stock, not your clip. Once you've opened everywhere you want to go, you want to start hitting the bugs, trying to get the best weapons you can. The best weapons on the map are the Browning, MG42, and Ray Gun. This is the worst gun, the Flamethrower. The reason being is it doesn't kill, overheats too quickly, and it even damages you. Same with the Panzerfrost. This gun will blow you up. If you shoot it too close to you, you will go down, as you see there. That's it. Taking those notes, and don't be stupid by blowing yourself up with a rocket launcher. Knock doesn't have much to it. It's the later maps that have a little more to them. Here, we have Rucked. Just like the previous map, you'll notice there's a little bit of redundancy here. You have an M1 Grand. There's another wall weapon here, Springfield. In this room, you have three windows. As you may have noticed, there's something else in the starting room. This machine here. It's called a perk. That perk specifically allows you to revive teammates faster. But now it's useless since online does not work. Unless you had the game before they turn the servers off, then you can join friends still. But if you're a new player, you're not going to be able to play with friends, so that perk is useless. On round one, you'll see there's zombies that may not be very quick. You can choose whether you want to shoot them to kill them or save your points and ammo, wait for him to come, then knife him. You can see on this map, there's a room over there. If you had a second player, there would be another player over in that room. That is the second starting room. Technically, this room and that room are one giant starting room. You can see there's a room in here. There's a wall gun on there. On round two, remember to use your grenades, knife crawlers, and one mag dump into a zombie and knife. Crawlers can take down barricades. They are basically invulnerable because you cannot reach them to knife them until they come through the window. On round three, throw your two grenades if you choose to. By round three, you can just mag dump. No more knifing. It's too dangerous. In the next room, you have a double barrel shotgun. You'll walk down the hallway and you'll see there's another wall there. That wall can be broken through by zombies. And the Thompson. This time you will want to buy a wall gun. The box is too far away to be surviving off of a pistol. So we're going to go upstairs. If you can tell, there's another blank wall there, and you guessed it, more zombies can come through. There's something new on this map though. Not just the perks, but also bouncing buddies and traps. Once the power is on, you can activate them. You have more wall weapons. And if you notice, there's another perk, speed cola. This allows you to reload your weapon much faster. If you look to the right, there's an electric symbol. That shows you and guides you to the direction of power. This will apply to any zombie map beyond here. If there's no power for a map, you won't see those symbols. On our way to the box and power, this is a nice little area to stay. If you need to hold off, there's no spawners in this area, so you can just aim towards the door to the right and lay in. Now that we're entering the power room, you see this box. And there's a power switch. You flip that to turn on power to be able to turn on other electric things, such as perk machines and traps.
Here's a good location to camp and shoot into the zombies that come through the doorway, because you only have one more spawner down to the left. Here you can see that I got a little greedy and didn't get a weapon, so now I pay the price by going down. So this is a perfect opportunity to show you the other side of the map. You have a car 98, grenades, and a Gewehr 43. On this side of the map, it's a completely different look and different layout, although it leads to the same direction. You also have a different perk machine in here. This one's called Juggernog. This one gives you more health, so you can get hit more. You can notice there's a door. Activate power in order to get through. You can see that was the room we were in before. Quick revive was over there. I forgot to mention, in this map, the box can move. If you use it too many times, it'll move to another location. Let's go upstairs. Here's another box location. Here you will want to buy the MP40 once you go upstairs. You can see another trap. Another blank wall for the zombies to break through. This perk is double tap. It increases your fire rate, which is excellent for guns like the MP40. As you can see, there's an electric symbol showing you which way to go to power. Another box location. And what do you know? We've made it to power. This time I waste no time getting a weapon, but unfortunately, I got a flamethrower. Here you can see guns have different weights to them. Some guns will make you run shorter and slower, or faster and longer. This is a good location to hold off. You have one barricade behind you, and two paths in front of you, but only some zombies come from power room. Most of them come from this direction. You don't ever want to back yourself into a corner, because it can be very difficult to get out. Especially if you have a really bad gun. Had I not had the PPSH-41, I would not have survived that situation. When you buy a perk, you can buy it and walk away. You don't have to stand next to it while drinking. The zombies in this game get a little finicky and, well, they can glitch behind you. That's why you don't want to get backed into a quarter. Here you can see I bought Speed Cola and my reload speed is much faster. Here you can see my fire rate will increase. This perk quite literally has no purpose, now that you have no secondary players online, but you can play local, you can buy that perk and revive them faster if they go down. Here you can see the electric trap will protect you from two ways, but it's dangerous because once it goes out, well, you might just get trapped. Here's the third map of the series. See, just like every other map, two weapons in the starting room, some barricades, this room specifically has four. And you have two ways to go. The warning door is the door we will be buying because that's the best solution. Here you want to keep closed. You do not want to buy the stairs going downstairs. Going through the warning door, you'll notice more wall weapons that you will not be purchasing. Some more barricades. And a zip line, which will come in handy later. Going downstairs, you'll notice a gate, and on that gate there's a trap, a new trap. A very iconic trap to the community. This location will be the location you will stay to be able to camp and farm up some points. There's no barricades, and that's why we left it closed here. We're also not exactly trapped, even though there's no way out right now. You can buy this door if you ever get jammed up. 
The reason why this location is good is because there's three paths in front of you, but they all have to come towards you, leaving your backside completely protected and the front for free shooting. You go over here, there's not much but one barricade. It's the front path and the right path that will have most zombies coming through. If you feel gutsy, you can go around walking and killing. Now, if you go this direction, you'll see a doctor's quarters. Now, in order to get perks on this map, you don't need power. To get perks, you'll open the door towards the doctor quarters. And when you open a door for the first time, zombies will spawn. You'll notice that the water here slows you down and uses up your stamina. This is a perfect situation for zombies to get you. So you want to try to avoid getting in the water. Here is the only situation where you'll turn power on, and it's for the zipline. Nothing else will need power in this map. Something new on this map is boss rounds. Every five rounds, hellhounds will spawn. This is why you want to make sure that you have good weapons right from the start, because these dogs are not easy. They will easily take you down. If you have a gun that does not kill quickly, and does not reload quickly, you will be running. And if you have to run from dogs, you can basically kiss yourself goodbye. At the end of the round, you'll be granted a max ammo. Make sure to reload your guns completely, and then pick up the perk. Next door you will be buying to go get another perk will be storage. Here you'll see three paths. You'll want to take the middle one. It's the one that will take the least amount of stamina and it will be the quickest and safest. You can see here it randomizes your perks again. And we got double tap. You see I got double points. You'll want to either wait until it's flashing quickly or wait until you see a zombie then pick it up. The last gate we want to open is one by the flogger. You'll come all the way to the end of the area. Open the door. And luckily we got Jug. The reason why that's lucky is that now we no longer have to open the door behind us in this area. You can also see I got a wonder weapon here, and I was forced to open this door. If you can avoid opening that door, that's going to work out really well for you. This wonder weapon can electrocute you, just like how the ray gun can hurt you by its splash damage. I didn't test it here, but rumor has it that if you get yourself electrocuted by this gun, you will lose Jug. Even though it still shows at the bottom left that you have Jug, it doesn't necessarily work anymore. Now that I've lost that area to camp in because I had to force myself to open it, I went to another location. I have to change my strategy. So instead of camping, I will be training zombies, running around them and piling them up. You can see here I'm utilizing strategies from before, jumping past tight situations, making sure they can't hit me. And when you build them up like this and shoot into them, you'll get more points because bullets can go through zombies and hit the ones behind them. It lowers the damage, but it still gives you the points. Insta-kill allows you to get rid of a horde very quickly. You can see the Wonder Wolf electrocutes multiple zombies in an area. I believe it can electrocute up to 12 zombies at a time. So I open the last door, even though I really don't need to. It's a quick revive. You can see that it doesn't randomize anymore because there's only one perk left to show. Bouncing Bettys are a good thing to have in, in this game. It, it, it can save you in situations. You can put them in corners that you might get trapped up a lot. Or if you have a giant horde chasing you, you can put it down and it'll blow them up. This is the flogger trap. People love this thing. It essentially just hits and launches zombies out of the way. It's just something so satisfying about watching a dead corpse go flying, isn't it? Four-legged freak sacks. Just more shit to 
Now that's essentially everything. You can see that the box got a teddy bear. That means it's moving to another location. That's basically everything about this map. And we can move on to the final map, Duris. As you can see, there's multiple barricades on this map. There are one, two, three, four barricades in the starting room. You have two weapons as usual, the Gewehr and the Car 98. This time, you will want to buy a weapon, just like how in Rocked we bought a weapon immediately. You'll be buying the Gewehr. This is one of two doors you'll be buying. If you can tell, there's a pattern here. Every map starts with about four windows to protect and about two doors to open. We're going to go this door because this is the best option. You'll notice there's a barricade here and you cannot open it until you turn power on. This map does require power. As you can see, there's a trap here and this room is perfect for training. There's a circular shape to it. Here's a box location. And a Thompson. From previous experiences, you might like Thompson a lot. You might buy it immediately. But I really highly suggest not doing that. If I wasn't clear before, when I said you'll be reusing strategies, the strategies you used on the first map you'll use for every map. Round 1, knife. Round 2, grenades. Mag dump, knife. Round 3, mag dump, dump completely. Switch to the other weapon. It's the same thing over and over again. Just on a different map. At the end of the day, it's really just about playing your favorite map. Or getting to the highest round you possibly can. It's like an arcade shooter. Essentially, you're just surviving and trying to reach for the highest score. Here, I'm not exactly sure which map it starts, but Nuke will give you 400 points when you get it. I try to get a Nuke in between rounds when there's no zombies because you want zombies for points. You'll want to turn power on once you have enough points for Jug, which is 2500. You can see there's Speed Cola. You're going to wrap around back to this original room we were in, and up here to the left you'll notice, uh, at the corner of your eye, there will be double tap around this door. door. This time you're going to cross the bridge instead of jumping down. You'll see there's another path. This is the other side. I usually like to keep this door closed, so that way Jug doesn't get so crazy as it already will. Bouncing Betty's. And here's Jug. And this is important. Make sure there's no zombies coming after you. Because it's going to be dangerous if you're drinking. Because if you notice, while you drink, you don't get the logo until after you've thrown the bottle. Meaning it hasn't activated until the bottle is gone. That gives all the opportunity for zombies to hit you and down you while you're drinking. You'll hear this audio cue happening. It's coming from those green jars. Later on, we'll interact with those jars to find a secret. Here's a perfect location where the box is to stand and shoot into the hordes of zombies, making sure they don't come up from behind you because there's nothing behind you. Only way they can get you is in front of you. This is why it's important to find locations where you can camp. This will allow you to rack up points. Now that I have 3,000 points, I'm going to buy Speed Cola. Now that I have 2,000 points, I'm going to buy Double Tap, and all the essential perks are finished. Again, Quick Revive is not important because you're the only player. Similar to the last map, this map also has Hellhounds. It can typically start between round 5 and 7. After the dog round, it happens every 5 rounds. and then pick up axe ammo. If you didn't notice, turning on power allows you to go towards the areas that were originally blocked off.
Here's the room with the green bottles that make the weird noise. What you're going to want to do is jump and hold interact with them. Whether that's your F key, your X button, your square button on PlayStation, I believe. Here you're going to go to the right, and this will be the first teleporter room you will open. This map introduces teleporters. What you're going to need to do is link this teleporter to the starting room mainframe. So essentially you want to run as fast as you can to the starting room again, following this exact path I'm doing. That door there, you notice, you can say, I'm just going to open that door, but it's good to keep that closed because it keeps you protected. If you ever get jammed up there, you can open that door and this room will be empty because no zombies will spawn here. It may seem like a short amount of time, but you see I'm just standing here casually until it counts down to 1, and then I press F. Which you do not have to do, you can press F as soon as you get there. I just want to show you how quickly you can actually get there, and how long it actually gives you. Again, it's in between rounds, so I'm going to get that nuke and get free 400 points. This will be the next teleporter room. I'll show you how. Here is another green bottle and our final green bottle. I'm going to hold F, X, or square on it. And you'll notice it activates a little song for us. If you spin the box and get a monkey out of the box, this is exactly what it does. Throwing a monkey will distract the zombies, but until it hits the ground, it won't distract them. So make sure you give yourself enough time to cover yourself. A lot of zombies are spawning now. I don't have a gun strong enough to kill them when they come up, so now I'm training them. Applying the strategies mentioned before, jumping past zombies when they're too close to me. Here I used a nuke, just to show that they don't die immediately. You will want to keep running away from them. This is the final door you want to open, which you can open whenever you want to because in this area there's another training room. Again, buying the pointless perk. Here we've been introduced to the Bowie Knife. This just increases melee damage, which I believe is a one hit kill up to around 13. I could be wrong. This is the final teleporter that you want to link. And if you notice, when I throw a monkey on a dog round, the dogs have no interest in the monkey, which is interesting to me. You would think the dog would want to tear it up and play with it, but Poochie is not wanting to play. As you saw, I stood in that area for a long time while it was linking, and again, I still made it to the mainframe, so the best thing you can do for yourself in zombies is to not panic. Here you'll see a new machine, it's called Pack-a-Punch, and what this will do is upgrade your weapons. So back in this room, you'll want to go upstairs and to the left. You'll see there's only one barricade up here. And if you come all the way down here, there's no barricades over here, so it's a perfect location to sit and shoot zombies as they come up to you. You will want to make sure you have a strong enough gun to kill, because if you don't, you are trapped. There is no way out of this location, so you'll only survive as long as your guns carry you. Now, if you go by bouncing Bettys, instead of having an escape route, you'll have a final holdoff. The reason why I survived that situation was because I put Bouncing Betty's on the ground in the corner here that I'm standing currently. So when I back up to it, if there's still zombies, they'll blow up, giving me time to reload one last time. Now when you get a max ammo in between rounds, you'll want to throw all your monkeys. That will distract the zombies and give you a couple extra kills. Then when you get the max ammo, you refill on monkeys. If you use this teleporter, it'll bring you back to the original starting room location, and you can pack a punch immediately. Sometimes you'll get a power-up over there. It's a good idea to pick up that power-up, depending on what it is, because it'll give you time to keep pack a punching. You can only pack a punch a weapon once, it'll only upgrade it one time. Now, 
I know I said this tutorial wasn't for Easter eggs, but this is just a fun, cute little one where you can, anyone can do it. So once you get really good at the game, you can entertain yourself. If you come over to this gate area, you can shoot a little box. This audio cue will play. Once she's done speaking, you can look up at the building here and you'll see a teddy bear holding a knife. Once you shoot it, it'll disappear and play that audio cue. If you enter this building here and go towards the cages in the back, there's another te teddy bear inside a cage. Shoot it and it'll play another audio cue. Now head on to the other side of the map to the furnace. You'll notice there's a monkey bomb in there. Shoot it, and you get an audio cue. If you have monkeys, go ahead and throw it in here, just for a fun little moment. And essentially, that is it. You've played the entire map. Now, to survive as many rounds as you can, and you can see, I get stuck here, and that's it for me. Now this game offers one more little treat, the thing that makes this game worth getting, mods. Basically, mods play the game way better than the actual game itself. I'm just going to give you an example. Someone remastered the first map that you play on the game, completely expanding it and changing it and giving it a new look. You can see there's a new weapon, it's completely custom guns, nothing from the original game. Has the same amount of windows, has the same path, but it does offer an expansion. It even has its own easter eggs. And Quick Revive serves a different purpose now. Most of the time, Quick Revive will give you a revive. So if you go down, you don't die immediately. The game doesn't end, you get a revive. So as long as you have the Quick Revive logo at the bottom left of your screen, that means you will be revived. The unfortunate part is when you get revived, you lose all your perks. You get three of these each game. So go down three times and you're out of revives. Or if you drink Quick Revive three times, you will lose Quick Revive and you just have to survive from there on out. You see I have no more quick revive, and that was the last time I could go down. Apply everything you learned in this video to any map that you play, whether it's modded or the original, and you will have much more fun time playing zombies. Now that you're not foreign to the game, get good at it. Enjoy it. There's a lot for it to offer.